Hey everybody, Rodman here. Thanks for tuning in to Star Sector, episode number two. So we left off um, talking to, well, we just got all of these ships or whatever ships I wanted recovered, recovered. So let's talk to the station commander. He's calling these ships are recovered rust buckets. And then he's saying that I should refit them. And he put some weapons in storage for me. And then he tells me to go stabilize the inner system jump point. All right. So he told me to go into storage here. And as you can see, there is some supplies and weapons for me to acquire. So let's confirm that. And let's go ahead and refit my ships now that I have stuff for them. Uh, so I'm going to take all the capacitors and vents out of my cruiser, my carrier rather, and put in a bomber and a fighter. Uh, additionally, let's see, missiles here. I'm going to put a Bihylum long range missile. And I'm going to put a anti-shield in front and a point defense in back. I'm going to set up the weapon groups so that the... They're all on different... Um, groupings here there we go and we're gonna call this I'm not ready to give these names so I'm just gonna call this condor uh, the hammerhead I'm gonna give a name gaze into the void which is named after one of my uh, one of my patrons and let's install some anti-armor and anti-shield weapons on the front annihilator rockets into the rocket pods Point defense, point defense, mortar, mortar. And let's go ahead and get rid of, uh, there we go. Get rid of some of the mods that I installed. So this one is all set. Uh, as for weapon groups, we want the two auto cannon mortar on the same group, the point defense on the same group, automatic, and then the uh, rocket pods on the same group automatic good that one's all set uh condor i had set you up but i did not set you up with uh capacitors events you're all set too uh this is just a tanker not a tranker a tanker and this is a civilian transport they're never going to be fielded for combat um this is a kite a a means uh, that it has some special mods. This one has a uh, militarized subsystem that um, increases the minimum crew required, but also um, makes it be able to deploy uh, more rapidly over and over and over. My own ship is going to be the Rodamanthus, and I should also mess with my own weapon groups here. So I am no, uh, I'm. I'll leave it be. I'll leave my ship be. I'm not gonna toy with it. I will change some of the um, the weapon groupings. There we go. And give myself some more. Let's get rid of my blast doors. And then get some more capacitors and vents. All right. So we've got a nice setup here. Um, I guess I did forgot to save when I leveled up Solomon here. So I'm going to give him the impact mitigation again. And rename him. You are going to be Vredog. And we're going to assign you to the... Actually, we're going to assign you to my ship. So this is going to become Gaze into the Void. And this is going to be the Rodamount This. I am taking the Destroyer for myself. All right. So it does have some compromised systems, but um, I'm all for having a much bigger ship. All right, trade goods. I'm going to trade off the weapons I didn't use, and we are going to get going. I'm going to save, because it's telling me to quick save for the tutorial. And now if I look at my fleet... Uh, Let me reorder it. Crew under strength. Oh, yes. I guess I saved that part too. Let me fix that real quick. Trade. Oh. Why am I under strength? 
Oh, I'm under strength because um, I changed the kite here. Uh, the kite, um, or the bulkheads rather, uh, system. All right, there we go. Now we're all set. So the current mission we're on is to stabilize the jump point, which allows you to transfer transport between, um, well, I'll explain that later, but uh, it's guarded by pirates and I have to blow up the pirates. So here's one of the pirate groups. I'm gonna move into engage. Uh, as you can see, I'm controlling Radamanthus, the balanced destroyer. Uh, if I say deploy all, as you can see, initially it only selects the combat raided. If I deploy all, which I really don't want to do, it would just deploy my civilian transport and my tanker. But they're non-combat ships. They really should never be in a scenario where they're deployed unless it's an absolute positive emergency. So I have... Uh, my ship's currently set up to be an escort, and let's go ahead and focus on this Buffalo class variant. The Buffaloes tend to be relatively easy ships to blow up. As you can see here, I just completely melted it. Uh, one thing I need to mention is don't sit right next to a ship when you blow it up or disable it. The explosion of it blowing up um, could destroy you or harm you a lot. All right, so their uh, big ship here is the uh, the Venture D. Uh, what I'm going to do is thin out the crowds here if I can and chase down their um, their little Cerberus. The Venture D is sort of a mixed cruiser or destroyer slash carrier. Uh, but let's get that one out of the way. And then vent out. So as you can see, this ship has some enemy, enemy fighters that are protecting it. Because I'm not being fired at, I'm going to keep my shields down so that I'm not building up hard flux or even have an excess of soft flux. And it definitely worked. Uh, what ended up happening was I um, built up a considerable amount of flux on the enemy ship without getting a lot of flux of my own. So the enemies are generally pretty good at deactivating their shields before they uh, will overload. But if you keep up the pressure like I am here, uh, they'll either overload or they'll drop their shields allowing you to put a lot of damage into them. Now as you can see, I'm just about up over my vents. So I'm going to try to vent out while staying in position to do some more damage so I can re-engage. Uh, all of these little ships here, these little fighters, are from my crew or my little light carrier over there, and they're putting a lot of pressure on this ship as well. And boom! The larger a ship is, the um, more devastating and larger the explosion is when you blow it up. So let me consider ship recovery. I can recover the Buffalo class destroyer, but it is. Uh, has four bars against it, meaning it's real messed up. So I'm just going to continue and grab its uh, salvage. I also just leveled up myself. So now I'm going to unlock the ordnance points, which is one I particularly like. Um, let me see. Less weapon recoil. Flux capacity would also be really, really nice. I've been sort of focusing on my flux because as you can see, the flux for loadout designs is there uh, as well. Another really um, nice one to get is uh, navigation. And I think I'm gonna get navigation. Navigation allows you to uh, have a sustained burn that's a little bit faster, which is very, very useful for running down enemies and outrunning um, uh, outrunning things that are trying to destroy you. Uh, so because I unlocked that third level, I have additional ordnance points. Uh, outside of a dry dock, you're not really able to use ordnance points for construction or anything like that. But uh, I can throw in some vents and uh, capacitors, but I am being docked supplies as a result. So some things as you can see here, I'll show you again. Um, 
these require you to be docked somewhere. All right, Vredog also leveled up, and we're gonna max out damage control. That would be haul damage taken, overload duration. That's good. And impact mitigation. So impact mitigation is level three, meaning it uh, you can tank a little bit better, and uh, damage control is level two. So engine and weapon repairs are faster. Uh, nice. All right, so there is, here's the jump point, but then these are also pirates that are running for me. Uh, they also happen to have a Sunderclass ship. Now I'm quickly re-engaging from last fight, which means, um, uh, which means that my combat readiness is going to be a little bit lower. As you can see, my combat readiness here, I don't know if it's hard to read, I get it, is 58 rather than 70 because I quickly redeployed. And I also didn't deploy everybody. I only deployed um, two ships to save on uh, supplies because I don't think I'm going to require uh, all four or three in order to, uh, to disable this Sunder. The Sunder class ship has uh, really, really, really high damage capabilities. It does sort of a um, hit and run sort of ship, and I, I rather like it for that reason. Another thing I could do, the special ability on this um, hammerhead is called uh, a Ammo Feeder, which allows you to um, fire ballistic weapons a lot faster. So if I get within range, I'm going to try to do some ammo feeding. And as you can see, it worked. It's a rather slow paced fight because they're in a constant state of running away from me, which is obnoxious. Whoa! That was a very good hit. I just got overloaded, and uh, this kite here just dumb fired, missiled me with a really damaging shot. And some additional missiles, and now I'm not overloaded. I should be careful about that. Yeah, the uh, Sunder class just dumped a whole lot of damage into me that I was not expecting. So my accelerated ammo feeder is ready. As you, yeah, the, these ships are chicken, and they are not committing to a fight. All right, fine. I will fight the Sunder. I don't like having a kite behind me that could missile me hard, but these guys aren't going to uh, full commit to anything. Whoa, that wolf ship just got all sorts of messed up. Use an animal feeder again. Be very careful as to not overload this time. So he, I've taken more hull damage than he has, but my money's on me. Ammo feeding again. Yeah. Boom. Unfortunately, it was destroyed. I would have much preferred to uh, disable it and use it on my as my own. Uh, so this ship here has uh, some fighters that are uh, deployed. So I'm going to quickly shred the hell out of it. I've overloaded it. It's gone. And now they just have a kite A? No, a kite P, which P is for pirate. So a pirate class kite. Now if I destroy these uh, little fighters that are um, harassing me, they're gone. Uh, they won't respawn because their mothership uh, is also destroyed. And this guy, what he's trying to do is he's trying to exit the map to uh, flee right now, which is why he's in a full tilt retreat. Now, there is one little um, bonus here. If you have zero flux, your top speed goes up. So my top speed right now is 140, um, which is actually the same top speed as this little ship.
but I think he's going to escape because we're going the same speed. He'd be going 50 faster if he had zero flux. Right now, he, as you can see, he's got like half flux. Oh, now he's retreating. Well, wish I got that uh, that Sunder, but I didn't. Uh, I'm just gonna um, let them go and pick through the wreckage. With more ship parts. So there is the one ship that got away and I've stabilized the jump point. So some of my ships are at really low combat readiness, meaning I shouldn't get another fight. I know that. All right, let's go back to Insira and say that we've stabilized the jump point. Uh, also, Vredog here is ready to level up again. So let's max out, actually, let's get Helmsman. Anytime there's a new skill that you find particularly useful, grab it. Because anytime you're level, you level up, you have um, it. You're, you'll you'll have two choices. Either you can, and sometimes it will be like leveling up the current skills you got, and then sometimes it will be obtaining a new skill. And you don't want to pass up obtaining a new skill if that's a skill you're eventually going to want. So if I repair my ships in the dockyard, I just spent twelve uh, supplies to do it, but it will do it instantly. Um, there is some, that's a point defense. Yeah, there's some weapons here. I'm just taking a look to see. The antimatter blaster is actually a pretty good weapon. Uh, that would be a good one for Wolf to use. All these other weapons uh, I can go ahead and uh, get rid of. I don't I don't particularly need them. So, refit. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna add another subsystem to my own ship. Um, let's go ahead and add flux dissipation rate increase so I can dissipate my flux really, really, really efficiently. Um, and that way I can do hit and runs better. What was that insulated? Uh, Dram, yep. So you will be switching out that pulse laser, laser for an antimatter blaster. The antimatter blaster um, is going to do more damage, but it has shorter range. And then additionally, let's do a flux distribution on that. So yeah, we have a, a lot shorter of a range, but um, harder hitting of a weapon. Trading away the old one. Oops, I traded on the open market. Oh well, can't do anything about that. But uh, And I'm also gonna buy the extended shields mod. Oh, I can't afford that. I almost can, but can't quite. Um, all right, so let's check in. He gave me money. And now he's telling me to fly to a new system and saying that I need to uh, answer a distress call and that I will need at least 50 food. Uh, f uh, fuel, rather. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, buy that mod spec that I wanted, and I'll show you what this does. So I just paid top dollar for it. Uh, but what this does, if I go to the refit, and I go to my own ship, uh, let's get rid of the flux distributing. And the hardened subsystems. So what this allows me to do is... Oh, I don't even... Oh, I haven't used it yet. Hold on. Right-click to learn it. And then, let's go into my refits. Add my refit. And here, as you can see, my extended shields. It increases my shields coverage by 60 degrees. My previous was 300 degrees. Now it's 360 degrees. Basically, I don't have a, um, I don't have a weak point in my shields anymore. I am um, Luke Skywalker proof, essentially. Okay, and let's add some additional flux distribution. Actually, let's do flux capacity. I'd rather have capacity with these increased shields. So I'm gonna max out my capacity to a ridiculous amount, and we're good. My next mission actually takes me outside of Corvus, 
to Gladia. Uh, and what I think I'm going to do before I go down there is uh, buy a few supply, uh, not on the open market. Buy some supplies. Buy some fuel. Uh, running out of fuel when you're uh, out in space is real bad. Um, I don't... Yeah, it's it's really, really, really bad to run out of fuel like that. Uh, because you'll just be stranded and drift. There is a way to um, call for help. But it is not a, uh, it's not a very efficient way to do it. Uh, I'm just going to put it like that. So now we are going to lay in a path for Corvus, or for Gladia. Uh, so the way to do this would be to, well, there's a few different ways. One way is to just lay in a course for an inner system jump point, And that will bring us out to the galaxy map or the universe map. And when you're in the universe, you'll start using fuel. Um, so it's very, very important to bring fuel with you and to keep track of how much fuel you have. Because if you, like I said, if you run out, you are uh, wickedly screwed. Also out here, uh, you don't need your transponder on anymore. No one owns the universe. So, I am to deliver my report to uh, Jengala. Or something like that. So now it says I'm in hyperspace. I'm using fuel. So here's my fuel usage. I'm using 14 a day. So when you enter a new star system, uh, let, me, let me take a second to explain this. Corvus is the star system. And then these planets that have their own gravity wells orbit. And then this is a fringe point. Basically nothing's there, but you can warp in. Don't enter a star system at the star. You're just gonna enter and be immediately super burning because that star is just gonna cook you. Um, out here, out here it won't hurt you, but once you jump in, you will. So now it's telling me, it's warning me that the hegemony wants my transponder on. So I'm gonna turn on my transponder to s satisfy them and jump on in. You, you don't want to enter Space that requires transponders with your transponders off, unless you know what you're doing. So here's a um, a trade mercantile uh, convoy, obviously way dangerous. And as you can see, there's a there's a whole lot of ships here. Um, so this planet here is a lot nicer than the last one I was on. As as you can see, just the image alone looks more Earth-like. And this plays a role later on when you're starting to colonize. We are to talk to Alaska here. And I'm giving her some star maps. And she, as far as I, I yeah. I've completed that mission now. Um, so that's it. That is the whole tutorial. And now it is all up to Sandbox. We can just decide where we want to go. So, one of the quick ways to make some money here would be to take uh, independent missions. So, if you hit, if you go out to your uh, Intel screen and you go to like new missions, oh, that analyzing the derelict ship has already been withdrawn. Um, okay, fine. You could try talking to the dockside bars to see if you can reach anyone. Um, sometimes they will give you missions, sometimes they won't. I'm also um, want to look into. My and uh, look into the store here to see what they have to sell because it's some uh, you know occasionally they'll have different weapons at different places and um, outfitting your ship in the best possible weapons is really nice. So I have a uh, Arbor Arborist auto cannon and um, heavy mortar. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that for now. I can't really afford very much. So let's go find some work. We are a freelancer, right? So this is a pirate station that's not going to offer us work. But this uh, independent world here is uh, uh, could possibly give us work. Now, from a... Hmm, 
how to, how to put this? From a role-playing standpoint, you have a bunch of different factions. Uh, so far, I've met the Hegemony, um, and here are some missions offered by the Hegemony. Uh, independent Luddic Church, which is, they're the Luddites, they hate technology. The Persian League, uh, Tritachion. Tritachion's like the high-tech group. Uh, and then you have the Independence. Independence is not a formal faction, but they do sort of look out for one another. And I would like to make inroads into the form into this faction. Um, that would be that that would be my goal. So here's a freelance administrator. I don't need quartermaster. No one wants to talk to me. Dockside bar. No one's there. Uh, all right, there's no work to be had here, unfortunately. And this will happen a lot. Now, another thing you want to do while you play is to keep an eye open for potentially habitable um, planets when you explore. Uh, that is very... It will pay off. I'll, I'll put it that way. It will pay off. Um, uh, so once you get... Oh... It warned me that there's a big threat waiting for me as I exit. So when you um, when you get a certain amount of money, you can start investing it into colonization of different systems and different areas. Um, all right, let me go to Arcadia. Uh, the The problem is it requires a lot of money and it also requires you to have knowledge of where there might be a good area to colonize. Um, So you want to always be watching. So all of these, there's sort of a um, the concept of a inner, uh, the inner galaxy. So this area around here is already all colonized up and everything, which means it's been explored and almost every single planet that's worth colonizing has been colonized. So when you're looking for new colonies, you want to be looking not too far away because if it's too far away, it is so far away from the core that trade's going to be near impossible. Um, upkeep of your colonies is going to be really, really difficult. Just trust me. You're going to be wanting to look at the radius that's only maybe within 50 light years or so. Um, uh, or 25, rather, light years or so of um, of the center. Um, but I'm obviously not there yet. But when I am out and about doing missions for people, I should be keeping an eye on that. Uh, this person is offering to tell me the location of a Luddite base for money. No, I uh, I reject that. Um, that comes in... That That's something you want to do later. Uh, essentially what happens is if, if, let's say, you set up a colony... I'm getting way ahead of myself. But let's say you set up a colony and it has, like, high-tech or big production or something like that. Uh, the Luddite church is going to send raids, and they're going to send raids from a base, but you won't necessarily know where the base is, so you can pay someone off who's an ex-Luddite church member, um, pay them enough money to go into hiding, and they tell you where the base is. And I am really not finding work. Uh, that's okay. I can keep jumping... Tritachion is also a, uh, a, a faction I like to ally. The hegemony kind of sucks. They're sort of the militaristic bullies of the galaxy. The independents are definitely the underdogs. Tritachion's pretty small, but they have nice they, they have nice high-tech ships, um, which is always fun. And I'm just jumping world to world to try to find work. And, and this is uh, pretty typical. Now, there's also... So, sometimes you'll find work on planets. And then sometimes you'll find work uh, just traveling. And you'll something will come in through the comms. And it will say, like, oh, you can go do this bounty or this mission or something like that. Alright. So, here's another person that wants to pay me to... Uh, um, to tell me the location of a base. Let's try... 
So the Tritachions, uh, sometimes they will offer you money. That's a loan. Uh, it's If you know how to invest it properly, it's not a terrible idea. I'm just not going to take that. Uh, and then here is a delivery mission. I have to accommodate uh, more units for cargo. So... How much cargo room do I have? You can see cargo room. Um, here. So I have... Cargo pass capacity of 321. And I'm using 111 of that capacity. So I probably have the ability to uh, take on that contract. So now uh, she's given us a bunch of recreational drugs. Uh, those, as you can imagine, tend to be illegal in certain places, but that's okay. All right, so now I have to deliver this to Zagan Star System, which is 57 fuel away, and I have 55 fuel, so I need to refuel. So let's go ahead and trade. I'm going to buy my fuel on the black market because I don't feel like paying a premium for special fuel that doesn't matter. And I'm also going to resupply my ship a little bit. And then I'm going to pick the closest jump point to get out of here. But I'm I'm manually flying so I don't fly straight into the sun. Or the, the star. And this star is bigger. Uh, it's a blue giant, so it, it would hurt. There's also things like pulsars, neutron, etc., uh, etc. Et um... So it's not just regular old stars, and even black holes. Uh, so sometimes these scavenger fleets will mess with you, so don't fly straight into a scavenger fleet. It is possible to befriend them by improving your rep with the um, independent faction. It's actually not a bad idea. And then, as you can see here, I'm also being given um, missions broadcasted out to everybody to do certain, like, analyze der derelict ship for, for the independents. Uh, I might. And then survey a volcanic world for the independents. Uh, I'm going to accept both of these contracts. There's a penalty if I don't do them. But as you can see, they're sort of, um, they're sort of on the way to one another. Uh, picking contracts that are grouped up is a really good idea. Oh, another thing. I just got hit by hyperspace storm. So these hyperspace storms, don't fly into them like I just did. I wasn't really paying attention. Uh, your ships will suffer damage. Uh, the only reason you'd want to fly into them purposefully is if you're really, really, really low on fuel because what they do is the hyperspace storms make you move a lot faster and they only hurt you when they're um, electrified like that. They uh, make you move a lot faster, but... Uh, but at the cost of a lot of supplies. So yeah, not something you're going to want to do a lot. So I am heading, oh, so there's pirate activity near Zagran. My current mission that I've accepted, if I go to the accepted, is to bring units to Yesod. So Yesod is uh, sort of through this jump point, but not really. Another thing I have to consider is the local police might be interested that I have all these recreational drugs. So I kind of don't want to get scanned by them. They don't always scan everybody, but if they do, they'll be moving towards you. So I've just delivered my drugs, I gained a whole bunch of credits, and my independent rep has gone up. I'm going to repair my ships. Uh, I just bought a drink from a guy in the bar who told me about the pirate base location. I don't really need to do that. All right, let's go ahead and, um, on the black market, buy a whole lot of... Actually, we can just fill up our tanks full of fuel holding uh, left control. And then I'm, um... 
I'm going to buy a whole bunch of supplies, about 100 as well. And let's see. I'm going to see if there's anything for me to refit here. So they have hypervelocity drivers. That would be pretty sweet. Um, yeah, let me let me redo my ship a little bit. So hypervelocity drivers have extremely long range and they're good anti-shield weapons. And then when I've shred their shields, I want something anti-armor or anti-hull uh, that has okay range. So I'm going to do. Um, Light assault guns. Okay, I like this. So, put my vents and capacitors back up. And weapon groups. My hypervelocity hyper drivers will be manually controlled by me. My light assault guns will be automatic. My light mortars... Wait, I have light mortars? Uh, let me get rid of those and put in... Um, point defense. Okay, my point defense is automatic, and my mi missiles are also automatic as well. I, I don't particularly like controlling missiles unless they're certain types. Um, okay, removing all of my negative um, modifiers on the ship cost me about 70 grand. It is expensive. Doing it for um, the tanker ship would be a lot cheaper. Uh, because it's a cheap little ship. But, uh, yeah, that's not something I'm likely to do anytime soon. There is also the ability to potentially buy uh, ships as well. Um, that's another way to, to, you know, gear up. So, um, you know, right now, if I look, here is, if I go to fleet and go to buy, I can see what they're selling. So like a condor here that isn't damaged is where they're selling for like 43k. Uh, Shrikes are pretty good ships selling for 26. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't really be worth fixing up my ship for such a high steep cost when I can buy a new ship for on the on the black market for not that much. And then here is on the open market uh, going to be a little bit pricier. Um, and then the Persian military it doesn't even want to do business with me because I have no rep with them. All right, so another thing I'm going to need is uh, 60 heavy machinery and 90 crew. So let me stockpile that up. So the heavy machinery... Oh, man, I'm going to have to buy this somewhere else. Is for the survey um, that I am embarking on, and then I need a 290 crew, so let me just on the black market get another 125 people just so that I don't dip below the required amount. There we go. Let's see if this other planet has heavy machinery. And you need to meet the minimum requirement to survey to be able to survey. Uh, but the rewards, as you can see, are big. 80k and uh, 60k. I just don't have an infinite amount of time to do it, so it's important that I, whoa, not fly into a star, and uh, supply myself for this mission pronto. Also, uh, you are making a stipend from the uh, Naval Academy. This eventually will go away. I only have it for 35 more months. Uh, this keeps me floating for 35 months, but then eventually the stipend that you make um, will disappear. Uh, so how much heavy machinery did it say I needed? Because this place has heavy machinery. I need uh, 60 of it. Okay. Trade. 60 heavy machinery. And I'm going to top up on supplies. As well. Uh, one thing to make sure you don't do is don't go over your cargo capacity. Because, simply put, you won't be able to... You'll, you'll burn a lot more supplies being oversupplied like that. It's um, bad, I, is the simplest way I can put it. Don't do it. Uh, this fleet here is 
pursuing me because they detected that I have a lot more uh, goods in my cargo hold than when I showed up, but um, I didn't officially buy anything because everything was on the black market. So I might actually lose some Persian rep if they um, if they flag me as having done black market stuff. So the first thing I can fly to here is this uh, volcanic world to survey. Uh, this is a really good way to, if the serve, especially if the survey missions are closer to home, it's a really good way to figure out if there's a nice place to colonize. Because most of the, um, you know, most of the systems that you'll end up going to won't be surveyed, uh, and you should keep an eye out for habitable worlds to survey. The more habitable the world, the less expensive it will be to colonize. So if you have like some sort of Mercury or Venus-like planet that is really inhospitable to people, when you colonize it, the upkeep of that colony will be really, really, really high, meaning it will barely turn a profit. Whereas if you find like a Garden of Eden, a Gaia world, let's say, um, the upkeep won't be really anything at all, and it will be really, really, really cheap to um, upkeep. Whoa, Jesus, I think they're chasing me. Um, which means that, uh, you know, you can make a lot of money with that colony. So the, the arrows are the direction I want to move in. Is it right here? I need to survey, uh, Prav. No, it's not right here. It's, it's like one system over. And where's Prav? somewhere in this star system. I can probably turn off my transponder because there's no civilization around here. So here's Prav. Um, now when you enter, when you enter a solar system, it will tell you what kind of worlds there are. So there's a volcanic, volcanic, you know, barren, irradiated, uh, volcanic. Sometimes irradiated worlds can be somewhat colonizable. Um, I don't even need to survey it to be able to tell. So, I before I survey it, it tells me that it has a hazard rating of 200%. 200 is uh, sort of average-ish. I wouldn't colonize a 200. Ideally, your first three colonies should be under 200%, like 150s, 175s, something like that. 200% isn't terrible. Um, it's just not super profitable. This volcanic world is a 250%. Uh, I have all the required things I need to survey it, meaning uh, heavy machinery, crew, and supplies. So let's perform the survey. All right, so I gained some experience. I gained a class three survey data, which is the, the data of this planet. And it has um, rare ore, or rare, rich rare ore and rich ore deposits. So it would be a really good mining colony, but it's, um, it's uh, hazard rating is way too high for my liking. All right, I leveled up again. I'm going to invest in fuel consumption under navigation so that um, I use up less fuel when I'm traveling, which is super, super useful, in my opinion. And what I'm aiming to do is I'm aiming to get sustained burn. Um, the next thing is for a faster sustained burn. That's uh, that's what I'm aiming for. But as you can see, my, uh, my credit's looking pretty good right now because I just completed that mission. And the last one is out here. I need to analyze a derelict ship. Now these aren't necessarily safe things to do. I just want to throw that out there. How much time do I have? Uh, 79 days, yeah, plenty. These aren't necessarily safe tasks to do. Uh, you could definitely find yourself destroyed. Uh, I'm also steering with my cursor right now. So as you can see, the ship's sort of lazily heading towards my cursor. And this is so that I can um, navigate the storm clouds. So the, the dark blue here means that it will have no chance to um, erupt. The light blue has a chance for a uh, storm. And then, you know, if you get hit by a storm, you're gonna be like shot off like a bullet um, in your forward direction, in your forward vector, and you're gonna take a lot of damage. Ideally, you don't, like I said, wanna be doing that to yourself. 
All right, so here we are. And there should be some sort of derelict ship around here. Now, there also might be uh, hostile ships that want to harm me and kill me. Uh, so here, you can see what kind of things you initially um, survey. The desert world would be potentially interesting to check out, by the way. Uh, but this desert world is a little bit far from um, civilization. And then you're also going to happen upon things like um, dormant... Oh yeah, this mining station, for instance, where you can explore it and salvage it and get a heck of a lot of good stuff from it. Uh, but this mining station gave me... Um, uh, filled up my, my cargo capacity a bit beyond my ability to carry it, so I'm going to ditch some of the less expensive stuff. Uh, but it also gave me a Gamma Core, which is a type of AI Core. Very illegal. Uh, it gave me armored weapon mounts that I can learn, and uh, Transplutonic Ore, I think. Transplutonics, rather, which uh, makes a, a buck or two. So before I uh, before I actually search for that dormant that ship that I need to survey, I have 65 days to complete it, so it's not a rush. Uh, here is that little desert world. Uh, it only has 150 uh, percent hazard. I'm gonna survey it. No, uh, yeah, I'm gonna survey it. So extensive ruins is really 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 cool. Uh, what extensive ruins allows you to do is to explore the ruins and salvage stuff from the ruins, which gives you potentially amazing things. So let's take a look. Uh, supplies, fuel, heavy machinery, more metals. Again, I'm going to be filling up my own inventory. Uh, volatiles, which is a lot more expensive than my... Um, uh, right now, I'm, I'm sort of eyeballing how expensive something is. So the base value is 250 per unit of volatiles. Uh, whereas for, um, like heavy machinery, it's far less. So what I might end up doing is ditching some heavy machinery to make room for something more expensive. Um, this is a, um, fighter design type. This is a blueprint to be able to make a whole lot of ships. That's very, very cool. And this is Cobra Ring Blueprint. Also very cool. Uh, all right. So I've just about maxed out what I can take here. Uh, I'm not going to establish a colony here, but it's cool that I uh, surveyed it. It is a class uh, 4 survey data. Uh, so as you can see, the base value for class 3 is like 5k. For class 4, it's up, up because it's better. Uh, I'm going to learn these blueprints. So this will allow me to build cobra rings eventually once I have a colony. And this will allow me to build uh, different ships like Dominators, Mora. Dominators are actually really, really good ships. Um, Tarsus, Lashers, different weapons, etc. There is also a plasma cannon that came with this, which is a large mount type energy weapon. I love plasma cannons. They're a lot of fun. Um, but I don't have a ship that I can install this on. I'm going to set this apart uh, so I don't accidentally sell it. I like to move my items down like that. But um, I'm just about out of time, guys. So I wanted to thank all of my community for being... Uh, you know, enthusiastic about this series. If you have things that you'd like me to cover, or if you're a patron of mine and would like things named after you, all you gotta do is let me know. If you're interested to discuss Star Sector and specifically this series, I do have a Discord server. If you'd like to join the Discord server, it is uh, linked at radamont.com. And I'll catch you all later. Thanks for watching. Adios.